Joined now by our hockey insider, Pierre Lebrun. Pierre, Guy Lafleur, of course, ended up as the all-time leading scorer in Montreal Canadiens franchise history, which is an incredible statement in and of itself. For the younger hockey fan that didn't have the opportunity to see Guy Lafleur play, what do they need to know? There's a lot they need to know. Number one, understand the context in which Guy Lafleur came into being a Montreal Canadian. I mean, taking the torch from Jean Beliveau, who took the torch from Rocket Richard. The pressure on Guy Lafleur when he was a young man wearing that uniform was unbelievable. This was a dynasty team, used to winning Stanley Cups, used to having their superstar player be the best in the world. And it took a few years for him, obviously, to blossom. But once he did, he did exactly that. 74 to 80, six straight 50-goal seasons, the best player in the world. But he wasn't just the best player. He did it with amazing style, with panache. He was electrifying. He would get people out of their seats at the Montreal Forum. And these were people that didn't just get out of their seats for any ordinary goal. They were used to Stanley Cups and superstars. But Guy Lafleur, with the hair flowing on the right side and that slap shot, did that at the Montreal Forum. So that's the first thing I would say is to understand the context of how this guy became a superstar. It was under immense weight and expectation, and he still delivered. It's amazing because I recall the hair flowing and the speed and his scoring prowess, but something that stands out to me, I got to see the, the tail end, really, of his of his career, of his long run of five Stanley Cups. Uh, but then he became an ambassador of the game. And I think Jeff Molson probably said it best when he said, Guy Lafleur always remains simple, accessible, and close to the Habs and hockey fans in Quebec, Canada, and around the world. How important was Guy Lafleur, the man, post-hockey career, in what he did as an ambassador for the game and showing young athletes how they should behave responsibly in the public eye? Well, I know my interactions with him, and he's such a humble guy for, for such a, uh, an amazing superstar who meant so much to that franchise. He was so humble. Never said no to fans wanting an autograph. Always had time for people. I mean, the way in which he handled himself in those moments for years and years would teach a lot of, of athletes on, 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 on how to comport themselves in, in those situations. Um, and he also spoke the truth. I mean, Guy Lafleur got in hot water here and there because when the Canadians would struggle, you know, uh, over the years, he would talk about it. He, he wasn't shy. He said it like it was. And, and I love that about Guy Lafleur, um, you know, about not holding back despite being an ambassador with the team. Um, and, and I think if there's another memory for me, Gino, and, and I actually tweeted this out, so I encourage people to go see it, but... You know, when he came out of retirement and joined the New York Rangers, his first game back at the Montreal Forum in February of 1989 was unforgettable. I was 16 years old, and uh, Guy Lafleur, you know, way past his prime, obviously. But in that moment that night, scoring twice on Patrick Waugh, the Forum faithful up on their feet and giving him a standing ovation and chance of Guy, 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 I mean, Dick Irvin said it best if you listen to the broadcast. No other visiting player had ever been afforded a standing ovation for scoring on the Habs in the forum. But that's what Guy Lafleur meant uh, to that fan base. Is it fair to say that he was one of the forerunners of the player who took hockey to the next level where he introduced... It went from, from a grinder game and, and mucking things out to Guy was part of the next generation of young hockey players who stepped up and said, we're going to elevate this game from a speed and skill standpoint and introduce something into the game that had never been seen before. Because as you mentioned, he became the first player in NHL history to score 50 and have 100 points in six consecutive seasons. He just raised the, elevate, uh, the skill level across the entire game. Yeah, no question. And I've talked to Wayne Gretzky in the past about, you know, how influenced he was by Guy Lafleur's greatness and his creativity and his offensive flair. And, of course, the 81 Canada Cup for Gretzky was so special for him because he got to play with Guy Lafleur. 
But, you know, does Mario Lemieux become the player that he does with his imagination and creativity if it wasn't for growing up watching Guy Lafleur, right? Um, I mean, think about that impact. But also think about why Guy Lafleur first retired uh, in 84. And, I, and, you know, this is not at all a criticism of Jacques Lemaire, his old line mate, but Jacques Lemaire had become coach of the Habs. And Jacques Lemaire would end up becoming one of the great defensive minds in the coaching world for many years, as we know. But I think part of Guy Lafleur's retirement was, yeah, I'm not down with this. I'm not down with maybe where the <laughs> game is headed, if you think about where the game headed in the 1990s afterwards. So I, I kind of get a chuckle out of that uh, because Guy Lafleur obviously had a vision for the way the game should be, player, uh, should be played with flair and entertainment and uh, with offense at the forefront. And, uh, and who doesn't? Hockey Insider Pierre Lebrun with his reflections on the legend of Guy Lafleur.